For exclusive products, content, and more, visit patreon.com slash revendelation. When you can see those holy flashes of heavenly flame that happen in a person's life, like we observe in our sister Edder, when someone is healed, it is because her consciousness and Christ's are one. She is fused onto God. I saw a dying, choking woman healed in 30 seconds as Mrs. Edder cast out the demon. The flame of God, the fire of his spirit, 10 seconds of connection with the almighty Christ at the throne of God. That's the secret. In Touch with the Power of God by John G. Lake. I would love to get you in touch with the Son of God for five minutes. I'd like to see the streams of God's lightning come down for 10 minutes. I wonder what would happen. A few months ago, I was out of town. When I returned, we discovered Mrs. Lake wasn't at home. It was just time to leave for the afternoon service. Just then, someone came in and said, Your secretary, Mrs. Graham, is in the throes of death, and your wife is with her. So I hurried down to the place. When I got there, the wife of one of my ministers met me at the door and said, You're too late. She's gone. And as I stepped in, I met the minister coming out of the room. He said, she hasn't breathed for a long time. But as I looked down at that woman and thought of how God Almighty three years before had raised her out of death, after her womb and ovaries and tubes had been removed in operations, and God Almighty had given them back to her, after which she had married and conceived, my heart flamed. I took that woman up off the pillow and called on God for the lightnings of heaven to blast the power of death and deliver her. And I commanded her to come back and stay. And she came back after not breathing for 23 minutes. We've not yet learned to keep in touch with the power of God. Once in a while, our soul rises to it and we see the flame of God accomplish this wonder, but Beloved, Jesus Christ lived in the presence of God every hour of the day and night. Never a word proceeded from the mouth of Jesus Christ, but that which was God's word. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. When you and I are lost in the Son of God and the fires of Jesus burn in our hearts like they did in him, Our words will be the words of spirit and of life, and there will be no death in them. But beloved, we are on the way. I've read church history because my heart was searching for the truth of God. I've witnessed with my own eyes the most amazing manifestations of psychological power. I knew an East Indian yogi who volunteered to be buried for three days and he came up out of that grave well and whole. I saw them put a man in a psychic state and place a stone 15 inches square on his body with his feet on one chair and his head on another and strike that stone with a 25-pound sledgehammer seven times until it broke in two. I watched these things and I said, these are only on the psychological plane. Beyond that is the spirit plane and the amazing wonder of the Holy Spirit of God. And if God got hold of my spirit for 10 minutes, he could do something 10,000 times greater than that. Jesus was the triumphant one. Did you ever stop to think of Jesus at the throne of God? I like to think of the 20th century Christ, not the Jesus that lived in the world 2,000 years ago, not the humiliated Jesus, not... Jesus dying on the cross for my sins, but the glorified, exalted Son of God at the throne of God, who stands declaring, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and death. That is the Christ that breathes his power into your soul and mind, and that is the consciousness that is breathed from heaven in the Holy Ghost when it comes to your heart. Amen. God purposed that the Christian church should be the embodiment of the living, blessed 
Son of God. Christ is living not in one temple, Jesus, but in multitudes of temples, the bodies of those yielded to God in holy consecration. God's real church, not in name only, but in power. Many members, one in spirit, one divine structure of divine faith and substance. Man transformed, transfigured, and transmuted into the nature, the glory, and the substance of God.